Hey everybody, Engine Doc back with you again. Got another engine to look at again today. We've got a little Gould, Shapley, and Muir. It's a Canadian built engine. It's throttle governed. Has a Webster mag. I found it on Facebook Marketplace, so I picked it up. Looked it over real good, didn't see anything wrong with it. But I didn't look it over good enough. We'll get into that here in a little bit. If you're interested in looking at this engine a little closer, stay tuned. Here's a picture of the tag on the engine. Built in Brantford, Canada, just north over the line from the United States. From what I understand, um, these people up here uh, in Brantford also made the Cockshut line of tractors. And they also produced some engines that look an awful lot like this under the same uh, name uh, in Brantford. We'll start up here at the front. Uh, if you look closely, you can see that the rocker has been welded. That don't bother me too much. Those were very easily broken. And if you look real close here, you can tell that the head's been cracked. It's been welded up. Of course, if you look underneath a little bit under here, you can see that there's been a repair under there. That's okay. That doesn't bother me too, but too much. I saw that when I first looked at the engine. Uh, also, I noticed somebody's put another gas tank on it. Uh, some auxiliary tank down here. And I got it from a young man who had tried to start it and um, he didn't, uh, he wasn't successful, couldn't get it running. So I brought it home and I cleaned the tank out. It was all nasty and the check valve was all, you know, sludged up. You know how they get. And uh, the fuel had been left in it and had gone bad. So I cleaned the fuel system and, and the little engine uh, started right up, ran fine. And um, it, uh, it sounds real good, runs real good. And then I got to looking at it a little closer. Well, here's a view of the muffler side. Uh, it's got a nice little muffler on it. And uh, got a nice pulley on it here. And uh, it looks good. It's on, it's on a cart, but it's kind of a makeshift cart. Um, got a nice little handle on it there. Uh, I've got it clamped so it won't roll off the table. But um, the wheels are nice. The axles aren't quite right. Uh, somebody tried and, uh, you know, it does roll around on the cart, but I'm probably going to take it off of this cart. Uh, there's the mixer. And like I said, it's throttle governed. And, you know, somebody, this happens all the time. People just get crazy with a paint can and spray the, uh, the valve springs and, you know, everything. It just, everything got sprayed on it. But, uh. So it's a pretty good little paint job. I've uh, got a fairly nice little oiler on it here. It holds water just fine. I've had uh, I've had water in it when I had it running, and uh, you know it looks pretty decent. Take a look at the back end of it here, and uh, let me get you another view of it here. Here's a view from the back side. Got a nice little tin cover on it here. I don't know if that's uh, original or not. I almost don't think it is, but uh, somebody's really tried to do a, a restoration on this, and uh, they uh, they did, for the most part, they did a good job, but there's one spot here that they failed miserably. Uh, let me show you. Okay, I've taken the shield off, uh, the crank shield. And anyway, this we get down in here and get a good look at this. Um, it had a lot of grease on it. If you look down here, you'll see that uh, there's quite a bit of grease and oil and buildup here. Well, this bearing was the same way. And uh, I started cleaning it off and wiping it down. And here's where I noticed the problem. Let me get set up for the shot here. Probably a little tough to see in this shot, but... This bearing cap here is cracked from one end to the other, right across here. I don't know if you can see that or not. We'll get it out and get you a better look at it, but 
once I started cleaning this up and got this wiped off and discovered this crack, uh, I thought, well, okay, uh, you know, <laughs> here we go with another repair. So, uh, hey, here we go with another repair. But uh, we're going to fix that. And uh, I'll get it off of there here in a minute and uh, show you closer what's going on and how I'm going to attempt to fix it. And there's also another story with it while well, I got you here. Uh, there's another story with this fuel tank that's added on. There's another story that I discovered. So uh, we'll let you in on that a little bit later as well. Stay tuned. Okay, here's our suspect. Let me get this greaser grease cup off of there. Here is the bearing cap. Now these these bearings have just been poured. I can tell that they're new. There's no scuffing on them or anything. They were just poured. And what happened was, I know exactly what happened. When they poured it, they didn't get the shims right. And um, it's got shims. Here's some of the shims I took out of it. They look like this. They're just little pieces of uh, brass here. And of course, I will completely re-shim everything, cut new shims for it. But what they did was when they bolted it down over the crankshaft, they bolted it down too tight and cracked it. Uh, it's going to be hard for you to see in the camera, but uh, this little booger here is cracked, clear crossed, uh, clear crossed here and down here. The only thing holding this together right now is 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 the babbit. Once I knock this babbit out of here, this will uh, will fall off. So I was running the engine, and uh, after I discovered the crack, I started it up and running, and it did not move at all. I mean, uh, would it have ever been a problem? Um, probably not. Uh, would I want to sell the engine to somebody else in this condition, knowing this? Absolutely not. So we're going to fix it. And uh, I've got a plan here. We'll see what happens. And uh, I'll show you the jig that I've come up with to help me fix this thing. Okay, so here's a mock-up of the, of the pouring jig, I'm going to call it. And of course, I haven't knocked this babbit out yet. Um, I will do that. But uh, this is how the the bearing cap, you can see the bearing cap here, get it down the shot. Uh, this is how it'll be bolted into the jig. And this is the mandrel, of course, and the plug ends. And uh, I'll probably have to put some clay or something around the ends, the ends to keep it from the molten metal from running out. But anyway, that's the jig I'm gonna use to pour the new Babbitt. So hopefully that'll work. If not, we'll come up with something else. It's just uh, a conglomeration of, uh, you know, pieces and parts that I've cut and drilled to, to hold everything steady while we do the pour. And also I'll be able to bolt this assembly into the bearing, the existing bearing over on the engine and get my alignment correct because, you know, when you pour these bearings, at least the guy that did it before me on this job, the crankshaft wasn't completely straight. The bearing cap might not be completely straight. So with this jig, I should be able to duplicate the lower half. This is the upper, the lower half of the bearing shell. And it should fit right together. So that's the plan. We'll uh, see if it works. Okay, so I think you get the idea there. So let's take this apart. I've already loosened it up off camera. We'll take this apart here. And uh, this, uh, this jig will serve two purposes. Get this off. And uh, here comes the mandrel. And this is just a, I machined a couple of caps. This is a thin mandrel, so it'll heat up nice and hold the heat um, until, the, uh, until the babbit sets up after the pour so that's that here's the how the caps bolted in we'll take these out 
pop this off. Here's a couple of spacers in here. Here's the cap. And uh, a couple of spacers I machined in here to hold that all together. Let me just stick the bolts back down in there for now. This comes apart. Let me take these loose here. This took me a oh a little bit of time to to drill this jig and get things made for here. Typically, I know you guys have done this before. You all you're gonna tell me you pour the whole bearing, you stick the crankshaft in there, you pour the whole thing. And yeah, I get that, but I'm gonna try it this way. Uh, we're going to strip this jig down completely. And I'm going to try it this way. It's just what I got to lose, you know, a little time, you know, no big deal. So let's take these off. Throw those over to the side. There's the bolts. Get this out of here. And we'll end up with a flat plate that I can bolt this down to. And I'll use my spacers here. Stick them in there. My bolts gonna be long enough. No, I'll have to get some longer bolts. But anyway, I will bolt this to the plate. I'm gonna get rid of all the babbit out of here. I'll either have to melt it out or knock it out. Get the ear loose. I'm gonna bolt it down to this plate. And that will hold everything fast until I can get this ground out and brazed up and that will hold everything together while I do the brazing operation. So that's the plan. We'll see how it works and uh, I'll bring you along and uh, you can watch this fiasco. Here's a shot of the crankshaft and the lower bearing. And uh, I think these were just poured recently. I don't know how many years ago, but Apparently the engine set around and apparently it's been running the way it's uh, greased up back here. But anyway, uh, I'm going to end up, uh, my next trick's going to be getting the crank out of it. And uh, that way I can get down to this, <clears throat> this bearing down in here and get my jig, my fixture, uh, bolted in down there and get the alignment correct. Let me come around here and see if you can see. As you can maybe be able to see. It's a little thinner here than it is here. Um, you know, that's just the way it is when you pour bearings. You just uh, align the crankshaft as as well as you can and and pour it. And uh, that's the nice part about this type of a bearing. Uh, it's pretty forgiving. So anyway, I'll get the get the crank out of it, and uh, we'll get set up. I've got to order up some Babbitt. I'll probably use what I melt out of the other one and uh, we'll get set up and, uh, and make the pour and uh, go from there. All right, I've got the engine off the cart here and I uh, want to get a good look at this little cart. Like I mentioned, it's, uh, it's not the best in the world. The wheels on it are nice, the axles are nice, but uh, Typically, when you have a cart, you want to be able to turn the wheels and have them go underneath the cart so you can turn turn it sharper. And it's just, you know, a couple things wrong with it. Let's, uh, let's flip it upside down and see what it looks like. Okay, off camera, I turned it upside down. The wheels do not fit the axles uh, at all. Needs to be a big bushing made here. Let's see what this one's like. Now this one seems to have a bushing or some kind of a washer or something in there. Here's the pivot. It's pretty nice, really. That'll work. Here's the way it's bolted up back here. Then the engine came through these holes. The engine bolts came down. Kind of hard to get to. So I'm going to take the axles off of the wood here and I'm just going to use the wood skid. And I'm not going to put the wheels back under it, at least at this time. I'll have them available if I want to, but I think I'll just leave it off the cart for now. Here's the fuel tank. 
that I took off. Somebody did a pretty good job of finding a tank that would work just fine in there and uh, made it work. Here's the check valve assembly. It's got a little shutoff valve here. Nice little fuel tank, but it's not the original. And that's what had me curious. Why did they put this tank on this engine? Well, I've got the engine on the, on the crane here and uh, it, uh, I flipped it upside down. Let's walk around the other side. You're not going to believe this. All right, I've got it, got it suspended here from the crane. Let's look down here. Oh, what we got here? <clears throat> We've got a, a hole cut in the bottom. The fuel tank was in here. And uh, matter of fact, it looks really good in there. But somebody's taken a emery wheel and Cut a hole in the bottom of the tank. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, okay. What were they thinking here? And then down here, it's been painted over very nicely, as you can see here in these areas. When I got this thing turned upside down, I saw that it had been patched up here. So I took a needle scaler. Let me show you what it looks like here. This this tool runs on air and it just uh, these little needles are great for knocking rust off and knocking this glue off some kind of glue they've got on here and this thing has been welded up all on the bottom here I mean this is uh, this is worse than an open heart surgery scar but uh, anyway uh, for some reason this has been cracked and I'm still in the process of removing the glue on here because I want to expose all this and see what I'm dealing with. And you'll notice kind of a gray finish inside there. Well, that is actually a tank sealer. And I have taken a mirror and looked down in here with a flashlight and I don't see where this is cracked clear through. So it's really nice to have, here's the port here for the, don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, there's a drain port there. Up here is um, where the fuel feeds out, goes to the carburetor fitting here. Uh, over here is the filler. It comes out nice. And uh, so I'm gonna put it back. I'm gonna use this tank. Uh, as it was intended, I'm going to make a patch panel and I'm going to uh, patch up this hole with a piece of plate and I'm going to go ahead and expose all the welding here and inspect that. This look, this down here is fine, nothing wrong with that. Then I'm going to seal the inside of the tank um, with tank sealer uh, with my patch on there and it's going to be fine. I don't know why they didn't do that start, but this looks like a sealer of some kind in there. I also found chunks of uh, core sand uh, stuck in there when they made the casting and cored this piece. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back with it uh, original, put the fuel back in the base here. At least that's the plan for now. And, uh, the reason I think that they cut this hole out, I don't know if they just couldn't get this plug out or they just wanted to look in there and see what, what's going on. But more than likely they cut a hole in it like this so they get in there and clean it out and probably had intentions of patching it up at a later date and that never got done for some reason. I don't know why. So you don't know. People do things differently. This is certainly not the way I would have done it. How'd this get broken? Well, the only thing I can figure is maybe it got full of water and froze. That's the most likely. I don't see anything on the sides here that's been repaired on either side. So I'm not sure. Um, still inspecting. I'll keep you posted on what I find, but... Uh, at this point, I'm going to try to get this tank 
uh, where it'll hold fuel again and, and relocate the, the gasoline source into here, go from there. But uh, isn't that weird? You never know. Of course, it was sitting on the on the uh, uh, cart there when I went and looked at the engine. Didn't know any of this. Saw the tank. Knew it had a tank on there. That was obvious. Didn't know why. So we just keep uncovering mysteries here. And uh, go from there. We'll uh, keep you posted on what's happening. All right, I got you on a tripod there. I want to show you how this uh, needle scaler works. It's pretty cool. Uh, turn your volume down. Turn your volume down, put your safety glasses on. Watch this. <laughs> that stuff right off of there that's uh i don't know some kind of epoxy but uh yeah it's kind of pot bellied here too so it's kind of moved out a little bit probably gonna i don't know if i want to take that plug out or not probably not i think it's Good right where, right where it's at. I'll buy a quart of that sealer and once I get the patch made for it, pour the sealer in there and kind of suspend it by the crane so I can, you know, rock the the engine around and, and make sure the sealer covers all the bottom of the tank. And I think it'll be great. Well, I had to crank while I've got the crank out. I went ahead Figured, well, I might as well see what kind of tomfoolery is going on here with the rings. It seemed to seal okay. And the piston's in good sh good shape. Rings look original. But they were sealing fine. So I'm going to put them back. They All the gaps were lined up, which, you know, that's not unusual. So I'm going to clean it up. And, of course, you know, when they painted, they had to paint the, the piston, too. So <laughs> it's just... Uh, one calamity after another, but the wrist pin seems good and tight. The bearing looks nice here. Piston looks good. Rings look good. So I'm going to throw that back together. But I uh, figured, well, you know, while I'm uncovering mysteries, I might as well yank that out and see what's going on with it. Looks okay, though. This is a fairly uneven surface. So I'm going to take a grinder and flatten it. There's some parting flashing here uh, where the two halves were poured and uh, I'll uh, take care of that flatten this out make a plate bolt it on there with several bolts and some sealer and then when I put the sealer on the inside that will uh, that'll seal it from the inside and hopefully we'll fix it all right here's what we've got so far I have uh, ground this all down pretty flat it's it's good enough and I uh, made a plate uh, to go on here and that'll bolt on there like so. I'm going to put some JB Weld around here. I'm going to actually glue this plate on too. Then I can stand the engine up. I've cleaned it out inside here as good as I can. Got all the loose junk out of there. And then I'm going to set it up and uh, suspend it here where I can rock it around and um, pour some tank sealer in there we're going to seal it up so that's the plan and uh, i'll get some glue mixed up and we'll uh we'll glue this up put this plate on and let it set overnight and uh and we'll come back and, and seal the inside of it and be done with uh with this part of it okay here it is i've got it uh closed up this hole down here 
I went ahead and drill, drilled all the holes in the plate and then transferred them onto the block. Well, when I went to drill that one, it's in this uh, nickel weld here, and it was absolutely, the drill bit would not touch it. So there's enough glue underneath it that it'll be fine, but uh, missed that one there because of the hardness. And I sure didn't want to break a tap off in there if I could get a hole through it. So, hey, it's going to be good enough. It closed up the gaping hole. And it's probably overkill on the bolts. I probably could have just glued this thing on here without any bolts and it had been fine. But, you yeah, know, hey, what, whatever. So, uh, there you go. We're going to turn it back up uh, next time we uh, work on this thing. Uh, we'll turn it back up and pour it full of uh, sealer and slosh it around in there as good as possible and drain it out and see if she holds gas. So we'll go from there. All right, we've got it uh, suspended here and draining now. Here's the stuff I used. And I've used that before, it's pretty good stuff. And if you look under there, you can kind of see it dripping out of there. As soon as it gets done dripping, I'm gonna stand it back up you can't allow it to puddle in there, so I'm going to try to try to keep it from puddling. I've got the holes here open, and I just you know on the on the hoist here uh, turned it up all different directions to get it all completely coated in there. It's kind of hard to do and run the camera too, so that's what we got. Let's move on with the the rest of the repairs now. Well, I'm going to end part one here. Um, didn't intend to have a two-part video, but I think I'm going to shorten it up to a couple different parts here. So uh, we'll end up here with the fuel tank repair. Uh, that'll give it time to cure. That stuff uh, needs to dry and cure in there. And um, so we'll give that plenty of time while we work on the bearing. I uh, did get the Babbitt in. I ordered some Babbitt, so I've got to get it. I got a little pot here to melt it in. and So we're going to get on with that on the next part, part two. See if we can get this bearing fixed, get this thing running. So uh, if you like what you're seeing, uh, you know, go ahead and subscribe for me and uh, leave a comment or whatever you want to do. Appreciate it. And uh, appreciate you guys watching. So. Stay tuned. We'll see if we can get this thing uh, making smoke again.